Hi everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri. Today we will discuss about few important viral infections like herpangena, hand foot mouth disease, measles, German measles, mumps and acute lymphonodular pharyngitis. If you go into the first infection with herpangena, this herpangena will present with the most important manifestation Hence, it is also called as a aphthous pharyngitis or a vesicular pharyngitis. So, this is caused by a coxapke group of viruses like types 1 to 6, 8, 10 or 22. And this is, number is very important and other ecoviruses like 9, 16 and 17 can cause herpangena. And enterovirus number 71 is also a etiological factor for the herpangena. The transmission of this herpangena may be because of ingestion or a direct contact or a droplet spread. And it is mostly a summer disease and mostly occurs in many children. Clinical features include uh, it mostly in, in incubation period is of 2 to 10 days. It mostly starts or begins with a sore throat, cough, rhinorrhea. There is be a low grade fever and headache. And then afterwards, there is a formation of small vesicles which uh, ruptures and forms the ulcers. And these ulcers show a grey base and a inflamed periphery on the anterior fascial pillars. So you can see in the picture here, uh, showing the vesicle, I mean ulcers on the uh, anterior fascial pillars. And even it can involve the oropharynx, soft palate, and uvula. So these ulcers are not extremely painful but the patient may complain of dysphagia and they can be healed within a period of 7 to 10 days. Treatment is mostly with the corticosteroids in the low doses it reduces the inflammation and pain. Analgesics for 3 to 6 days to reduce the pain and there will be of local use of antiseptic mouthwashes and you have to remember that patient is advised to take a soft food. Then the second infection is a hand, foot and mouth disease. The etiology of viruses may be Coxsackie A virus number 16, less frequently with A5, 9 and 10, Ecovirus number 11 and Enterovirus number 71. These are the etiological factors for hand, foot and mouth disease. And this virus infection is also most common in young children. You can see a maculopapular rash and which then there will be formation of vesicular lesions on the skin and mostly involves in the hand, feet, legs and arms and the patient may exhibit all prodromal symptoms. Oral manifestations, it will be of uh, sore mouth, there will, we can see the sore mouth and uh, because of uh, there will be of small multiple and vesicular ulcerative lesions in the oral cavity. The common sites for this oral manifestations are heart palate, tongue and buccal mucosa. And even in this condition, you can see the tongue will become very red and edematous. So in laboratory findings, you can see the intracytoplasmic viral inclusions. And uh, this viral uh, isolates can be obtained whether from a rectal or a throat swabs which show for the vesicular fluid. And there will be of a rise in acute or convalescent serum antibody titered to Coxsackie A16. Treatment, you have to give that symptomatic treatment here because the patient will have a severe pain. That affected patient should stay in the bed for a 3 to 4 days. And there is no specific antiviral therapy. But the thing is uh, you have to give a supportive care like nutrient supplements along with the hydration therapy. Antipyretics for uh, subsidal of fever. And this disease is self-limiting. That means it will subside within a period of 1 week to 14 days. Then coming to acute lymphonodular pharyngitis. Here the etiology for this thing is Coxsackie virus A10. Incubation is of 2 to 10 days and it most commonly seen in children and young adults. And here the elevation of temperature will be of uh, very uh, more where you will see a 100 degree foreign heat to 105 degree foreign heat fever you can be see here. And the symptomatic codes of uh, that means that symptoms may be last for 4 to 14 days and uh, this uh, local oral lesions will heal in the period of 6 to 10 days but even that erythema can be seen for the seven several days 
these are the oral manifestations where you can see a raised discrete and whitish solid papules surrounded by the erythema and usually lesions are not vesicular here and so they do not ulcerate and mostly the lesions occur on uvula soft palate anterior pillars and posterior oropharynx in histopathological features you can see a papules or nodules which can they consist of a hyperplastic lymphoid aggregates and intranuclear inclusion bodies and treatment there is no treatment required here because this disease is mostly a self limiting disease coming to the next infection measles it is also called as a rubella this is very important name you may, you should not confuse with the german measles or a rubella and here this is also a acute and contagious infection etiology is with a paromyxovirus this is a rna virus incubation is of 8 to 12 days transmission is mostly through respiratory secretions or a direct contact of droplets in the clinical features there will be of uh, mostly they arise during the spring seasons and uh, individuals will be of infectious from 2 days before uh, becoming the symptomatic until 4 days and there will be of associated with the rash and this virus is mostly associated with lymphoid hyperplasia so the as lymphoid tissue is involved so involved sites are like tonsils and adenoids and you can see the giant cell infiltration in various tissues along with vasculitis so these two are responsible for the characteristic rash there are of three stages of infection here which each stage lasts for about 3 days so uh, there will be of a it designates that the measles will last about for a period of 9 days and first 3 days are dominated by three c's that means you'll have a coryza that is runny nose cough and conjunctivitis and fever will be accompanied with these symptoms and during the initial stage you will see a important characteristic feature is coplic spots and this coplic spots are uh, multiple areas of mucosal erythema which can be seen on buccal and labial mucosa and even this in this thing you will see a sm number of uh, small blue white macules in then the second stage even the fever continues but these coplic spots get fade away and a macular papular and a erythematous rash begins so phase is involved first here that is in the second stage with a, which eventual down spread to the trunk and extremities and here you can see a diffuse macular papular eruption and they will tend to blanch on pressure third stage fever ends and even that macular papular rash begins to fade away and they, there will be of uh, that rash is replaced by a brown pigmentary staining and common complications in children there will be of a otitis media or a pneumonia or a persistent bronchitis and diarrhea if there is delayed complication term there will be of a subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis which arises at a late 11 years after the initial infection this is very important so this degenerative disorder of cns will cause personality changes seizures coma and death if you go into the histological features uh, there will initially coplic spots are of areas of focal hyperparakeratosis and the number of nuclei uh, within this jain cells ranges from 3 to more than 25 which are called as warthin fankelde jain cells this is very important and if you go into the close examination of epithelial cells it cause a it we can see a pink staining inclusions in the nuclear or a less common in the cytoplasm so mostly intra and cyto intra nuclear and cytoplasmic inclusion bodies can be seen treatment is mostly by fluids and non aspirin antipyretics as they cause ray syndrome and other in immunocompromised patients we can use ribavirin immunoglobulin interferon and vitamin a and even a vaccine is there to prevent this viral infection so next infection is rubella or german measles and this is a mild viral illness uh, which they it produced by a virus which belongs to toga virus and genus is ruby virus and here uh, this will uh, i mean this is very important because this infection have a capacity to induce birth develop birth defects in the developing fetus 
and incubation period may be of 14 to 21 days and it is contagious from one week before the exanthem and after the develop and five days after the development of rash and this uh, infants with congenital infection may releases the virus even for up to a period of one year clinical features mostly they are asymptomatic and frequency of these symptoms will be of greater in adolescence so prodromal symptoms can be seen here before exanthem and along with lymphadenopathy of suboccipital lymph nodes post auricular and cervical chains and the first sign of infection is a exanthematous rash here it mostly begins on the face and neck where it spreads entire body within a three days and even it exhibits a facial clearing before the rash spreads and this rash will be resolved in three days so the classic triad of congenital rubella syndrome is deafness heart disease and cataracts it is very important oral manifestations is characteristic thing is like force hamer sign they are nothing but small discrete or a dark red pebbles which mostly present on the soft palate and then here this exanthem rash usually become evident in about of 6 hours of time after the first symptom treatment is of with uh, where it, it is not needed necessary but you can use non aspirin antipyretics and antipruritic medications and the passive immunity can be given with human rubella immunoglobulin there will be of a two two dose vaccination schedule with this mmr vaccine and it should be recommended then if you go into the mums this is also called as a epidemic peritoitis mostly with the acute contagious viral infection and you will see a bilateral swelling of the parotid gland and even it may involve the meninges pancreas and gonads and the uh, childhood is of uh, 4 to 6 years whereas in incubation period 2 to 3 weeks the transmission is mostly with the respiratory route pathogens is because once uh, it is transmitted to droplet nuclear saliva it will start replicating in the respiratory epithelium then it spread, spreads to the local lymph nodes and if you see the affected area there is a perivascular and interstitial mononuclear cell infiltrates and even there will be of necrosis of acinar and epithelial duct cells seen, seen in the salivary glands so this occurs mostly in the children between the ages of 4 to 6 years and there will be of enlargement of the salivary gland with preauricular pain fever malaise headache and myalgia mostly in 10 percent of cases only involve the submandibular glands and there will there is a enlargement and uh, is sudden and there is a painful thing on palpation and that swelling may be of firm rubbery or a elastic and it will elevate the ear which lasts for about one week and this pain and tenderness is seen during the rapid phase of the parotid enlargement and here uh, there will be a uh, salivary duct uh, and inflammation but without a purulent discharge and uh, once the gland they, it, can, it may become symptomatic within a period of 24 to 48 hours and usually bilateral swelling can be seen which is approximately last for 7 days and you can, you can see a pre-sternal edema also complications are like mild meningitis, encephalitis, deafness, myocarditis, thyroiditis, pancreatitis and euphoritis and even the males can experience epididymitis, orchitis so there will be of a res uh, resulting in a testicular atrophy and infertility so these are the main complications regarding this mums treatment is with uh, palliative in nature that is supportive care and hydration therapy non-aspirin analysis and to uh, we have to give a bed rest uh, to minimize the orchitis you have to avoid sore foods and drinks which will decrease the salivary gland discomfort and uh, proper vaccination is there for this so thereby preventing the infection 